begin reading our story, the vocabulary included in the story is allowance, noticed, sand, garage, and practice. So I want you to think about these words. Now I'm going to say it in sentences. Allowance. Dad paid me an allowance for the week. Garage. I cleaned the garage so Dad could park the car in it. Noticed. Mother closed the door after she noticed it was open. Practice. The team learned to dribble the ball at basketball practice. Sand. Before Jack builds the doghouse, he will sand the wood. I also want you to think about characters, which is going to be our reading focus for today. Characters are people or animals we read about in a story. We learn about a character by how he looks, what he says or what she says, what he or she does, and what he or she thinks. Page two, characters. A story character is a person or animal in a story. We learn about a character in four ways. One, how the character looks. Two, what the character says, such as wash your hands carefully. Three, what the character does. And four, what the character thinks. Our story, beginning on page three, it's called One of a Kind. It is a realistic fiction by Millie Howard illustrated by Sandy Mijas. And I want you to think as you read, who is the story mostly about? What can you learn about the main character? And let's begin. Turn the page to page four. This section is called Bits and Pieces. Made it, Ethan cheered as the soccer ball sailed past his friend Pete. That's five goals in a row, he exclaimed as Pete ran for the ball. Let's see you beat that. Ethan's dad turned into the driveway and stopped the car. As he got out, the soccer ball sailed across the yard. Good kick, Pete, called Mr. Cord. You boys are getting pretty good. All that practice is starting to pay off. Thanks, Mr. Cord, Pete grinned as he followed Ethan to the car. Page 5. The boys noticed a big box in the back of the car. Ethan peered into it. What's that, Dad? He asked. Oh, just bits and pieces from different bikes, Dad said. I know a boy who needs a new bike, and I thought I could put one together for him. You boys want to help? Sure, the boys replied. Great. You can start by carrying the box into the garage while I change into my work clothes, said Ethan's father. He opened the back door and went inside the house. Page 6. The boys tugged the box into the garage and began looking at the bike parts. Pete held up badly scratched handlebars. Boy, your dad was right when he said these pieces were from different bikes, said Pete. These handlebars are red and that long piece is blue. Why would he want to go through all the trouble to put a bike together for someone else? Dad is always doing things for other people, replied Ethan. He goes with the pastor to visit people in town. When he meets someone who needs something, he tries to help. But look at all these parts. Why would he go to all the work of putting a bike together when he could just buy one? Asked Pete. Page 7. Bikes aren't all that cheap, Ethan replied. I should know. I've been saving for a new one for almost a year. Pete put the handlebars back into the box and looked up. What kind of bike do you want? Ethan's eyes sparkled. A silver flash! Wow! exclaimed Pete. The silver flash is the best. How much money have you saved? Ethan sighed. Not very much. I get an allowance, but I'm supposed to use part of that to buy my school supplies. The money doesn't go very far. The door slammed behind Mr. Cord. Ready, boys? he asked. Page 8. Mr. Cord took some pieces of sandpaper out of a box. Why don't you boys start sanding the paint off some of the parts? Ethan pulled out the long blue part, and Pete picked up the red handlebars. Both boys watched as Ethan's father showed them how to sand off the paint. Then they all got to work. Page 9. An hour later, Pete stretched and put down his tattered sandpaper. I've got to go home, he said. If I don't leave now, I'll be late for supper. Thanks for the help, Pete, said Mr. Cord. Ethan walked with Pete to the garage door. See you later, Pete, he said. Then he came back to look at the bike frame his dad was starting to put together. Think it's going to work, Dad? Mm-hmm, replied Dad. I think I've have enough parts. He stood up and wiped his hands. It's time for us to stop, too. 
Ethan helped his father put away the tools and clean up the garage before they went inside to eat. Page 10. The next afternoon, Ethan and Pate raced home from school on their bikes. Be you, called Pete, breaking at the cord's house. Ethan's wheels spun as he turned into the driveway. Just wait, he said, frowning. When I get my silver flash, you won't stand a chance. Pete just laughed. Want to come over to my house? Ethan glanced at the garage. Part of the bike frame was propped against the workbench. No, he said slowly. I have to do my homework and then help Dad work on the bike when he gets home. Why? It's not your bike, said Pete. Dad wants me to help, Ethan replied. Every day? Glad it's you and not me, called Pete as he pedaled away. See you tomorrow. Page 11. When his father got home, Ethan was already in the garage sanding the bike frame. Hi, Dad, he said looking up. Dad grinned. I'm glad to see you working already, Ethan, he said running his hand lightly over the frame. What do you think of it? Ethan shook his head slowly. Well, it's no silver flash, he sighed. But I guess if you didn't have a bike, his voice trailed off. Just be patient, smiled his father. You might be surprised. I'll change my clothes and be right out. Page 12. By supper time, the frame of the bike was almost free of paint. Ethan put down the sandpaper and stretched. I'm starving, he said. His father nodded. You've done a good job, Ethan, he said. This might take less time than I thought. Tired as he was, Ethan enjoyed hearing his father's praise. He helped put the tools away and then went inside the house. Dad, he asked, do I know the boy? What boy? asked his father, reaching for an old cloth and soap to wash his hands. The boy who gets the bike, Ethan replied. Oh, that boy, Dad smiled at Ethan. Just wait and see. Ethan gave his father a puzzled look, but his father just smiled again and tossed a towel to Ethan. I thought you were starving, he said. Ethan dried his hands hastily. I sure am. Let's go. Page 13. The next week, Ethan and his father spent most of their afternoons in the garage. His father worked slowly, taking care that each part was in good shape and fit perfectly. Why are you being so picky? Ethan asked when his father rejected a part that looked fine to Ethan. Son, if you want to do something, Ethan grinned and finished. Do it right, his father laughed. Do I say that a lot? He wiped his hands, Ethan nodded. Well, this bike is for a special boy, his father added. Special? Ethan looked up quickly. Still not going to tell me who the boy is? Nope, his father smiled as he reached into his pocket for his keys. Why don't you clean these parts while I run down to the hardware store and pick up what I need? Page 14. Soon after Ethan's father left, Pete rode up on his bike. Hi, Ethan, he called. Are you still working? Ethan stretched. It's taking a long time to finish this bike. Where are you going? To play soccer, replied Pete. Remember? Ethan clapped his hands to his head. I forgot. Well, hurry up, Pete said. We need to get going. Ethan shook his head. I can't. I told Dad I would clean these parts. Just tell your mom that you're going to play soccer, Pete said, turning his bike around. She'll tell your dad when he comes back. Ethan hesitated. He had not played soccer all week. He shook his head. No, I'll wait until Dad comes back. Page 15. Pete gave a disgusted shake of his head and rode out of the driveway. Ethan stood still and watched Pete pedal back up the street. Then he turned slowly and went back to work. This dumb bike... Ethan grumbled to himself as he began to rub the metal. I wouldn't be surprised if it falls apart when that boy tries to ride it. When his father came back, the parts were almost clean. Intent on his work, Ethan had forgotten about playing soccer. He and his father worked for another hour or so. Then Ethan stood back to get a good look. Hey, Dad, he said in surprise. It's starting to look like a real bike. Dad grinned and began to pick up his tools. Ethan helped, stopping from time to time to look at the bike thoughtfully. Page 16. You know something, Dad? Ethan said as they closed the garage doors. That bike would look good, painted blue. Dad nodded. That's exactly what I was thinking, he said. I picked up some blue paint at the hardware store and some silver paint, too. What's the silver for? Ethan asked. Oh, I thought you might want to do some detail work on the bike, replied his father. But I'll leave that up to you. After supper, Ethan used the computer to look at different kinds of bikes. He looked in some store ads, too, but he could not find what he wanted. 
Even pictures of the silver flash were not quite right. Finally, he picked up a sheet of paper and a pencil and began to draw. Page 16. The next afternoon, Ethan's father found him in the garage, papers in his hands. Look at this, Dad. Ethan handed him the papers. These look good, Ethan, Dad said slowly, looking from the drawings to the bike. I think we can do it, too. We'll have to be careful, though, to get it just right. After I spray the bike blue, you can paint the flashes of lightning. Really? shrieked Ethan with delight. Thanks, Dad! Ethan watched as his father sprayed the bike frame. How long will it take to put the rest of the bike together? he asked eagerly. Not too long, his father replied. Everything is ready. When this is dry, you can do the detail work, and then we'll put the bike together. Page 18. The next afternoon, Ethan raced home and charged upstairs to change his clothes. I'll be out in the garage, Mom, he called and ran out again. When Ethan's father turned into the driveway, the bike frame was already painted. Silver flashes of lightning flashed against the dark blue frame, and silver handlebars sparkled in the afternoon sunlight. He leaned forward to inspect the paint. Looks great, Ethan. Is it dry? Yes, sir, Ethan replied. Can we put it together now? Sure thing, said his father. I'll be back in a minute. Page 19. When his father came back outside, Ethan's mother was with him. She watched as Ethan and his father finished putting the bike together. Then his father stood up and steadied the bike on its kickstand. Ethan's mother smiled. You two did a great job. That's the best bike I've ever seen. Well, it is one of a kind, Ethan's father said. But I think it needs a name, don't you, Ethan? Ethan took his eyes off the bike and looked at his father. Oh, yes, sir. It has one. Lightning. His mother and father smiled at each other as Ethan turned back to the bike. Lightning. That sounds good to me, said his father. Well, we're going in. Are you coming? In a minute, Ethan replied. After his mother and father had gone, Ethan walked around the bike. One of a kind, he said to himself. I wish... Page 20. The next morning, Ethan was awakened by his father shaking his shoulder. Wake up, son. It's Saturday. Time to deliver the bike. Ethan groaned. The boy. All through breakfast, Ethan felt a little sick. I'm being selfish, he thought, wanting a bike that Dad made for someone else. His feet seemed to drag as Ethan followed his father to the garage. Lightning stood on his kickstand where Ethan had left it the night before. His father wheeled the bike out of the garage. The early morning sunlight picked out the silver sparkles. Page 21. Well, son, what do you think? His father asked. It's a great bike, Dad. Ethan swallowed hard. As good as a silver flash? Asked Dad. Ethan tried to smile. Better, Dad. This bike is one of a kind, remember? Where are we going to deliver it? It's already been delivered, his father smiled. It's yours. Ethan stared at his father. Mine? But wh why didn't you say so? Would you have wanted it at first? His father asked. Ethan shook his head, remembering how he had wanted a silver fash. Page 22. We just couldn't afford a silver flash, Ethan, said his father. I hope this bike will do. It will, Dad. It will. Ethan gave his father a hug. Just then, Pete rode by. He waved and then stopped to look again. Ethan looked at his father. His father chuckled. Go ahead, son. Ethan hopped on lightning and spun out of the driveway. Wild whoops split the Saturday morning quiet as the two bikes raced down the street. Page 23, one of a kind. So here's some questions that I want you to think about. Number one, can you name the characters in the story? Who is the story mostly about, and how do you know? One thing to think about is you want to use the text as evidence to support what you claim to think is true. So look back in your text for quotes that can support who you think the main character is. For example, question number two, look back at page 11, then look back at pages 15 and 16. How did Ethan's attitude about the bike change and maybe you can find some clues about who you think the main character is and why number three why was ethan excited when he learned that the bike was for him number four why do you think ethan's attitude about the bike changed 
vocabulary to think about as well is afford, hastily, practice, allowance, hesitated, rejected, deliver, noticed, sand, garage, patient, and steadied.